Hello everyone, welcome to the Innovation Lab. So I have an amazing news that I want to share with you guys, knock on wood. So uh, don't get too excited because we're about to get started. All right, I know that a lot of you guys have been asking us to find a way to build affordable battery charging system or converter systems that can give you high output currents. And some people are asking for high output voltages. And in the past, what I've tried is to know if there's a way I can connect two converters in parallel so that way we can achieve high output currents that way but as you guys have seen in those videos those efforts did not work reliably but I do feel positive about what we have right now which is a way to do synchronous sharing on two or more converters all right guys so my plan is to incrementally and slowly test the system and I also plan to uh, carry you guys along on the process so that you guys can see everything that we're doing. So we're gonna start from a lower voltage test and we're gonna to go to a higher voltage test. And in the very end, we're gonna share the full system, the schematic and everything. I don't wanna share the schematic until I am sure that it's gonna work. I don't wanna give you guys something that is not safe. All right, so what you guys can do to support our channel, support this effort is to share the videos, subscribe to our channel and like and share and comment. Give us your thoughts, give us your ideas as we go along in this journey. All right guys, so this is the very first video of the series and what we're hoping to accomplish is just to turn on the system and we vary the output voltage using a 24 volt input. So we see how much load we can put on the system and then we go from there. All right, my friends, it's time for some weekend fun. I am super excited. So let's go get started. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the system and we slowly dial up the output voltage. So this is the uh, voltage adjustment potentiometer and it get moved from the uh, DC to DC boost converters. I moved it out to here, to the control here. So it'll be easy for me to just control it. So we pushed it a little bit more. So we are now at 87.3 volts. So for the output currents or for the load sharing, so what we're seeing is that this uh, converter here on the left side um, is monitored here. And as you can see, the fan just kicked in and not too long, this guy is gonna kick in as well. Amazing. Looking at that, what we're seeing is the output of this guy goes through this current probe and we are seeing 8 point, almost 8.3 amps being delivered to the load. And the output of this guy goes through the second current probe here. And this guy is delivering 9 point, almost 9.4 amps going to our load. All right, so right now we have 24.5 volts coming in from our battery system. It's gonna keep dropping slightly and slightly because we're driving all of this from our battery system, which is the Sun Gold Power uh, 24 volt, 100 ampere hour battery system here. This battery system is really amazing. I highly recommend it. And at the output, we're seeing 87 volts. So if we do the math, looking at everything we're seeing so far, we should be pushing close to 1600 watts going to our load. And as you guys can see here, the waters are boiling, showing that the heat from the uh, water heaters are being dissipated into the water. All right guys, so any test that we conduct on a system like this is never going to be complete until we actually look at the efficiency of the system. So it's never enough that we're converting our lower input voltage source to a higher output voltage source, but we also need to know that we're doing it efficiently. So let's go ahead and repeat the process and this time around we're going to look at the overall input current coming in from the battery system to the converter system and we're going to look at how much current overall that the two converters are delivering to our load. All right, so let's go ahead and slowly raise the output voltage 
like we did before. So looking at the input side, what we're seeing here is an input current of 71.3 amps at an input voltage level of 24.3 volts coming in from the lithium ion phosphate battery system. All right. And as you guys can see here, our drive PWM is almost at the max duty cycle. All right. So let's look at what's going on at the output. At the output side, we're seeing an output voltage of 87 volts and we're seeing an output current of 18.56 amps being delivered to our load. All right, so when we take a step back and look at the overall picture, we can kind of calculate the efficiency of the system. And looking at the numbers that I'm seeing here, my best guess would be that this system is currently running at efficiencies that are greater than 90%. The next test we're going to conduct is to use the converter system to try to uh, charge this 24 volt lithium ion phosphate battery system. And according to the manufacturer data sheet, this battery system requires somewhere between 28.8 .8 volts and 29.2 volts as the recommended charging voltage. So to play it safe, we're just going to target 29 volts as our charging voltage. So we'll go ahead and set this system to 29 volts and then we dial down the charging current before we now bring in the battery system. All right, as you guys have seen, the synchronous connection is working really well. And looking at what we have here, we have a 24 volt input power supply. And as you guys can see, uh, we have an input current of about 61 amps going through the DC to DC converter. And we dialed it up to be able to charge this battery system. And the synchronous converter system is delivering about 51.35 amps going to our battery system. And as you guys know, each of these uh, converters have an output limit of about 30 amps. And once you hit that limit, regardless of the output voltage level, you're not gonna be able to get more current out of each of these converters. This shows us that the synchronous link works. So the question now is, is this gonna be reliable? Can we add more converters in parallel using the synchronous link? These are all the tests that we're gonna be conducting here. We're gonna be testing this at different voltage levels and we're gonna be updating you guys. And in the very end, I plan to show you guys what we have done here. All right guys, that's really it for this video. My intention is to keep these videos that's gonna be in this series as short as I can. And I will be explaining everything that we're doing as we go along. So if you like to see all the progress, be sure to subscribe to the Innovation Lab. So essentially what we have done here comes down to allowing one of the converters to make the decision about the PWM control that's going to drive the entire system. So this converter here is the one that is producing the PWM control signal. It looks at how much load we have at the output and it kind of shares the same PWM duty cycles with this converter. So that way they are both doing the same thing. As you guys can see here, this is the PWM control signal that is driving both of the systems at the same time, every time. So there's a lot that goes into this whole concept to make this a success. And I wanna take my time to test everything to make sure it's gonna work well. And at the end of the series, I will be able to share all the schematic, everything that we have done with you guys. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the final video. All right, my friends, I will see you guys in the next video.